Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating this exponential tower, or you can call this a tower of exponents, whatever you want to call it. We're going to evaluate e to the power, e to the power, e to the power, and that goes on forever. Now, I say evaluate, and I know some of you are thinking something at this point, and you're like, why are we doing this problem, blah, blah, so on and so forth. Don't worry about it. Uh, my goal is to explain a couple principles. I think this is an important concept. Uh, exponential towers and uh, I'll present two methods so something interesting we're gonna talk about All right, great so let's go ahead and look at it from a functional standpoint so suppose we have something like this y to the power y to the power y dot 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 so on and so forth and let's set it equal to x so we're going to be doing a little bit of substitution here which is uh, kind of obvious hopefully uh, this, you know, y to the power, y to the power, by the way, when I say y to the power, y to the power, y, it doesn't mean y to the power, y then to the power, y, because this is y to the power, y squared. Why would I write it that way, right? Thought like, why would I write it that way? Okay, so this means that uh, we can put the parentheses here. We don't, but that's what it means. Okay, great. So if y to the power, y to the power, y, so on and so forth, equals x, then this is the same thing as x, isn't it? Okay, based on our assumption. Of course, there are some issues that I'm skipping here. I know it's not rigorous, so on and so forth. Don't, don't be mad if you're a real mathematician, because I'm not. Anyways, this is y to the power x equals x. And from here, we can raise both sides to the power 1 over x, as long as x does not equal 0. And this gives us y equals x to the power 1 over x. So this is what I was trying to get. This is the function. Hmm, interesting. This is the function we're going to be taking a look at. I'm going to show you some graphs. Uh, we're going to make some tables. We're going to look at the derivatives. We're going to do a little bit of calculus. Uh, and it's going to be interesting, I think. All right, let's keep going. So I have this function y equals x to the power 1 over x. And I, I want to uh, say that x, I want x to be positive. You know what? If x is not positive, we have a lot of crazy um, jumps and issues, but later I'm going to show you uh, maybe what the graph looks like, or maybe we'll talk about it later. But anyways, x is positive, and let's ln both sides here. If you do, we get ln y equals ln x to the power 1 over x, and this means ln y can be written as 1 over x ln x, or ln x over x. Awesome. Let's go ahead and differentiate both sides, treating y as a function of x, so we're going to do implicit differentiation on the left hand side which is kind of like u remember if you have the derivative of sine u it's cosine u multiplied by u prime so this is y prime over y from the rules and the right hand side is um can be differentiated using the quotient rule the derivative of ln x multiplied by x minus the derivative of x which is one multiplied by ln x and that is going to be divided by x squared x cancels out and this leaves us with uh, 1 minus ln x over x squared. We can go ahead and cross multiply by y. And that gives us y prime equals y times, by the way, y is equal to x to the power 1 over x. So I can write it like this, times 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. Awesome. Now, a lot of times when we take the derivative of a function, because we're trying to understand the behavior of the function, uh, where does it increase? Where does it decrease? Does it have any maxima or minima? Any inflection points? Is it always increasing? So on and so forth. So set the derivative equal to zero. That's going to answer a lot of questions. Obviously, x to the power 1 over x cannot equal zero, right? There's no way. So we have to set 1 minus ln x equal to zero. Obviously, you don't want x to be zero, but that's not an issue because x is positive. From here, you get ln x equals 1 and x equals e. That is going to be our uh, x coordinate of our critical point. Let's go ahead and make a table. And my table, I know some folks don't like the table. They want me to use the second derivative test. But who would like to take the second derivative of this beast? I don't want to. So I'm just going to go with the first derivative, and the critical point is x equals e. And now I want to look at the following. If x is, and here's where's my derivative, okay, great. So now if x is greater than e, then uh, 1 minus ln x, since ln x is going to be greater than 1, uh, 1 minus ln x is going to be negative. That's going to make my derivative negative because this is positive, this is positive. 
So my derivative is going to be negative if x is greater than e. Otherwise, the derivative is positive, the first derivative. This means that the function is going to be increasing on this interval and then decreasing on this interval. It's kind of nice visually because you can see where the bump is, where the max is, so on and so forth. Great. So I have a max here at x equals e. And if, if f of x is equal to x to the power 1 over x, then I'm kind of being a little rigorous here by writing the function notation. f of e is going to be e to the power 1 over e. And that is approximately, I did it for you, 1.44. I think in another video, which is this one, uh, we compare this number to uh, square root of 2. And they're pretty close. If you look at the square root of 2, you're going to notice. But you can definitely look at this video here for that. So the maximum, the max, which means maximum, value of f is e to the power 1 over e. And just notice that e is greater than e to the power 1 over e because obviously 1 over e is less than 1. So e to the power 1 is greater than that. That is an important concept because here's what happens. Our function, our function or expression is only going to converge, which means you're going to have a finite value for infinitely many iterations, only if the y value uh, that you use here is less than or equal to e to the power 1 over e. When I show you the graph, it's obviously going to make more sense. But that is the max you have to hit. But this is obviously e is greater than that. So there is no way we can have an, a tower of e's and get a finite answer from here. Unfortunately, our uh, tower is not going to converge. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another perspective. Now, you already know what is going on, but I just still want to show you what the second method looks like because it's an interesting uh, approach. Okay, if you want, you can call it second method or second approach, whatever. So I have the e to the power, e to the power, e to the power thing, and we called it, I don't know, let's just call it x this time. Is that okay? And then now this becomes x as well. So from here, we get something interesting, like something that looks super duper simple. Well, not really simple, but it's kind of simple. e to the power x equals x. And we can kind of solve this equation. Maybe we can't, but let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this. Uh, we're going to look at the other graph later. But notice that these graphs do not intersect. Now, let's find out why these graphs do not intersect real quick. First of all, y equals e to the power x is exponential. That's going to grow much faster than a linear function. If you look at the slope at any point, the slopes are going to increase because the derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x. So the, the slope of the tangent line at any point is e to the power that point. Uh, and notice that uh, y equals x has a slope of 1, so the slope doesn't change. Therefore, they're not going to intersect. But if you check the um, slope of the tangent at 0, you're going to notice that you're going to get a line that is parallel to this, which is... As, uh, which has a slope of 1. So that kind of shows you that they're not going to intersect. Therefore, we don't have any solutions, this, which means we're not going to find anything from here. All right? Let's go ahead and take a look at this graph now, which is kind of the culmination. It, this is really nice. So you see the graph uh, of y equals x to the power 1 over x. And here, uh, look at the value of e to the power 1 over e. I already told you that it's about 1.44. But... Uh, if you look at that, uh, like I kind of put like three e's, like e to the power e to the power e right here, it's about 3,814 something, right? That's like over 3 million. Okay, imagine like you use three e's and you get to 3 million. If you use four e's, unfortunately, Desmos fails here and it just says undefined. That number is way too large. Okay, that's the power of exponentiation. But notice one thing that's kind of interesting that if you you know, kind of pile up the square root of 2's and you can do very many of these and you're going, always going to get a finite value. And it's e kind of easy to evaluate this one by using the same approach. You can set it equal to x and this becomes x and so on and so forth. I think in another video we've done this. But this is basically what it is. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.